by executive order. Their main directive being that these 15 million plus new Americans will replace the old Americans and grow as a separate nation within the United States. Obama established the Task Force on New Americans in November of 2014 in the wake of a complete breakdown of our immigration system under Obama's unconstitutional executive orders. As of today, there are well over 180,000 criminal illegal immigrants freely wandering around the United States committing new crimes crimes every day, according to ICE agents and members of Congress. Meanwhile, DHS Secretary Jay Johnson has issued an order to diminish aerial surveillance on the Texas border. This after Governor Abbott requested more surveillance last September, a request that was obviously ignored. The Rio Grande Valley has seen an increase of 115% in unaccompanied minors, while the El Paso border has increased by 300%. And over 28,000 Cubans entered the United States in 2015, twice the number the year before. America is no longer economically sound enough to cushion the blow of millions of refugees that actually hate everything we represent and our tax dollars pay for. What do you about? Eh? What have I got to talk to you about? Eh? What have I got to talk to you about? What have I got to say about Islam and that, innit? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? yeah? So why don't you say it now? What do you want me to say? It's yeah? ideology. It's got no place. Yeah? Yeah, it's got no place, bro. I don't know, know what you like, bro. You have about 100 you in a minute. <laughs> you fucking little chief. <laughs> The middle class is aggressively shrinking. We've lost millions of jobs due to international trade deals. Cities are going bankrupt. And the national debt is at a record 19 trillion. Meanwhile, as 31 governors oppose the acceptance of Syrian refugees into their states, the remaining balance of our nation's officials are declaring their cities as sanctuaries at an alarming rate. Has the Paris Massacre or the San Bernardino Jihad been forgotten already? John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, coming up, we're going to tell you about some new smart toys that are totally hackable. Didn't see that one coming. And also, we're going to re-air a Alex Jones prediction from about 10 years ago and show you how it ties into what's happening present day. Stick around. You guys have the exclusive for it, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in, in stuff for, for a couple of years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime- So it's almost like an oil up. from- Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it, and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and 
And during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It the oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shellajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. And it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. InfoWarsLife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> The top three appear to be uh, Trump, Cruz, and Rubio, with uh, uh, Rand Paul moving up quite a bit this last week. It looks like the fact that Donald Trump skipped this last debate really seemed to help Rand Paul. First, it moved him up considerably in the uh, polls when he was left out of that first debate because he utilized that time very wisely to uh, take uh, questions on social media and to talk about issues in a thoughtful way. Uh, that would not be allowed in a debate, as sad as that is. The debates really All don't right. cover uh, much in terms of issues. They don't allow... Uh, What's your the favorite candidate? fantasy football team? Yeah, exactly. They don't allow the candidates to get out of this really tiny, narrowly defined set of issues that they talk about, not only every election cycle, but every one of the debates. Tell us what your tax plan is going to be. Tell us what the levels are and the rates are and so forth and so on. And they all brag about that. If they're a governor, they brag about how many jobs they personally created in the state. It's just absolute idiocy. And they do it every single debate, every single cycle. And so it was very good for him to, to break out of that and mm -hmm. to talk to people directly about issues. Right. So he had a bump in the poll then. And then when Trump set out this last debate, it allowed uh, a, a more serious discussion of some issues because he was Trump wasn't dominating the uh, debate as he always does. And so Rand Paul was able to talk about some of the issues. So with those two turns of events, he's moved up in the polls where I'm certainly hopeful that he's going to have a stronger uh, showing in this because I would like to see somebody who is talking about genuine libertarian issues, things like controlling the surveillance state not setting up suicidal World War III triggers all around the world with right. no-fly zones. He's the only one who has any sense in the, uh, in the Republican Party in terms of the no-fly zones. And Donald Trump is a little bit uh, hesitant about that, kind of setting on the fence, but only Rand Paul says this is madness. This is Dr. Strangelove level madness. The other guys just want to rush Full on. They don't think that Obama has done enough in terms of the number of wars that we've gotten ourselves well, involved in. Well, they want in. to make sure that the military industrial complex is well fed. That's right. right. That's right. And so that's one of the things that has hurt Rand Paul is that, you know, he's really kind of a, a guy without a, a man without a country in a sense because mm -hmm. uh, a non interventionist foreign policy is not something that sells well in either party. Both parties really want to have a, a uh, war or both really war parties. Now, guys, I, I have a special guest I want to bring here in studio. Um, you guys know Mrs. Clinton has been out there in the campaign trail, and she's been very busy. She's too busy to go watch the Benghazi movie. But if you're watching this right now, Mrs. Clinton is in studio. She, Come she on looks in. hot today, too. She looks Come hot on. today. I heard you, Corey Jackson. Oh, oh you, get, you got your southern accent well, going on. I am in Texas. I'm caucusing from here. That's how good I am. You go check the polls Pandering right now. To the it doesn't even really matter. I mean, you already know I won. I took all the money from George Soros. 
<laughs> well, Mrs. I, Mrs. Clinton, we've I think had, you forgot uh, to shave. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, it's all the, it's all that Monsanto they keep giving me over there, and I didn't know it was going to have that effect. I mean, this is really a wig. I'm bald, but you know, the the beard is all coming out. He no, ain't no Hillary. ways tired. Now, Mrs. Clinton, <laughs> I know you're in no ways tired, but, you know, people have been concerned about your I'm health. You're showing tired. up late to the baits. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you sure you're... <laughs> Are you no, sure I'm you're fine. well enough to... I'm a little lightheaded, but I think that's the Monsanto, too, as well. It's not from when you <laughs> fell and hit your head. No, no, no Mrs. Clinton, <laughs> uh, you were in the... Well, no, it wasn't a debate, but it was a forum where somebody asked you about your husband's activities, about the allegations of uh, all the victims. Do you have any concern or uh, that may impact your campaign? What difference does it make? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to win anyways. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm caucusing from Texas. Spilled. What do you even? I'm already winning. I don't even have to be there. Come on. Oh, you are. Let's let's take a look at your polls numbers <laughs> here. Uh, what we got here. I'm sure my caucus has turned out really nice. Uh, so you, right now, you know, the numbers are still pretty. I was pretty neck and neck with Bernie Sanders. Yeah. What do you think? Once again, being beaten by a man. It's a real possibility here. Who said that I was a woman? <laughs> I've been fooling all y'all for a long time. Clinton's little secret. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Victoria's not the only one with a secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go back over here and try to continue to to get people uh, Hillary for president. And I see right. you guys, you keep wearing those Hillary for prison t-shirts. Those things really make me angry. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Clinton. <laughs> Okay, so well, hopefully she's not back in our IT department. Uh, I think Alex is ready to join us now. Alex, well, you're absolutely right, David. We have entered the national security state, and it doesn't make us secure; it makes us less secure. And that's what it was always designed to do. Ruling elites of being banking families is take technologies of social control used in the third world, in Southeast Asia, and Latin America, and Africa, and Eastern Europe. And they have exported those now directly against the people of Europe and the United States as they blow up the engine of liberty and free market innovation and development that gave them the combustion engine, the equations to create atomic weapons and power, that gave them the Wright brothers at Kitty Hawk, that, 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 that gave them the power to create the internet. They've now stolen the Promethean fire of the grassroots middle class and working class people of every race, color, and creed in the American melting pot. And they have now uh, basically come in and taken control of that system and are in a breakaway civilization right now and so that's what's happening um, this is really a question of does the elite really want to use technology and systems of control to dumb everybody down and stop the promethean fire of progress from being trans people or, or to be truly enlightened folks and believe in humanity and that if you're so enlightened you shouldn't be afraid of other people being enlightened in what well, uh, as well well, one of her defenses is to say, well, what the State Department has done is over-classified this stuff. And it's like, you know what, Hillary, you don't get to make that determination, okay? That's like, you know, if I was to get pulled over by the police for speeding, I would say, you know what, these speed limits are just too low. Let me go. You know? right. <laughs> and of course, I'm not going to get away with that, but she's going to get away with that because her last name is Clinton. Right. Mm -hmm. and, well, and, and she can just continue to lie. And to say that. She was never, I mean, she was never assigned a state.gov email address. So everybody knew it's not that she was given the option and then, oh, I just decided to use this one because it was easier. No, this was a deliberate uh, means with which to bypass the federal records management there in the government. This was premeditated. Well, if these are overclassified, then what she needs to do is just call up her former employees at the State Department and give them the same instructions that she used to give them via email and say, well, I want you to send this information to me. So if it says classified on the top, just cover that up White and out. copy it over <laughs> and send it on the fax machine anyway, you White know, or like with a cloth. Yeah, cut and paste this <laughs> so that you can get this to me. I want you to send this to me. I don't care if it's Putting secure or not. Just get that top secret classification off the top. And that's essentially 
what she's telling the State Department now. Right, and that's the kind of president that she's going to be. She, yeah. What difference does it make? Well, I just put cut, lives at cut all the corners and for your personal convenience, because she said it, she, it's just easy to have it on her phone. Mm -hmm. Not that you couldn't access it and from the phone. And she had three way. phones, an <laughs> iPad, a laptop. Hey, didn't she have like a, a book that she put out, had a picture of her using her phone or a Blackberry? Yeah, uh, that was her. on the back of her bus, actually, when uh, she was oh. there.